Barakatu Yahweh, Barakatu Yahweh Shai, Barakatu Yahweh, Barakatu Yahweh Shai, Barakatu Yahweh, Barakatu Yahweh Shai. Thou are honest to the apostles and elders of great millstone that have taught us this truth, that have taught the word of the Lord and prophesied for many years. Uh, Shalom to you sincere brothers out there. The title of this video is going to be, Will He Allow You to Take the Chip? And the He that I'm referring to is the Most High. All right, Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai. That's right. Will He allow you to take the chip? Because a man might say, you know, they're not going to take the chip when the time arises when He is tempted. All right, but it's the Lord that has to put a spirit on you when that time arises to not take the chip, to not sin against him and to not sin against your own soul whereas when you read in revelations the 13th chapter and the 14th chapter the consequences for receiving this chip all right and we know this time the time that we're living in is getting ready to come upon the earth very soon all right Everyone is already getting accustomed to this cashless society. Everything is either uh, paid with cards or apps. All right. So when the time arises, will the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai allow you to take this chip? The thing is, we don't know. But we have to pray to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai that He does not allow us to take this chip. And then shall be known who the true servants of the Most High are. All right. Uh, so I'm going to go into the scriptures and pretty much show you, brothers. You know, all for edification. By the way, that uh, it's not us that's going to uh say yes or no whether or not we take this chip. It's a spirit. That the Most High, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, is going to put upon men to either refuse this chip or to take it. Alright? So, first scripture we're going to go to Revelation chapter 3, verse 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. Alright? And we know the hour of temptation is that RFID microchip, man, coming upon this world. And you can no longer buy or sell without having that chip, whether it's in your right hand or your forehead, as the scriptures state, or whether it's in your shoulder blade, or whether it's in your butt cheek, all right? Okay? It doesn't matter. It says, which shall come upon all the world to try them that are upon the earth. Because once this cashless society is done away with, the new thing is going to be that RFID microchip. Which in all actuality is really not new. These devils are just trying to get their plans into uh, fruition. They're trying to accomplish their goal of the new world order. Which, like Nick Rockefeller said, he revealed it to Aaron Russo that the main goal of the elites is to have everybody chipped so they can play God. But as the scripture says, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, and the word patience means to suffer, man. All right. It says, I also will keep thee. From the hour of temptation so it's the most high that's going to keep us from the hour of temptation lord willing it be his pleasure all right it says which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth 
In other words, the trying them is testing them, man. All right. Let's go to some of these words here. Let's go into this word patient. It's from the Greek. Strong's G 5281. Upamane. 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 What does it say? Uh, steadfastness. Consistency, uh, endurance. It's a little lengthy. It says in the New Testament, it's characteristic of a man who is not, uh, what's this, swerve from his deliberation. It's like a deliberate purpose and his loyalty to faith and piety uh, by even the greatest trials and sufferings all right which like i said through spirit the word patience means to suffer man it says patiently and steadfastly a patient steadfast waiting for a patient enduring sustaining perseverance you know and that's what we're doing through the spirit, man. We're suffering temptations and things of that nature. But it's the most high that's going to keep us back from taking the ultimate uh, test, man. We're taking the ultimate, uh, you know, temptation. From resisting the ultimate temptation, I should say, rather. Which is that chip. Which I'm just on Google. All I, all I put in was... RFID microchip and all this popped up, man. You know? These images of the chip. So, this thing here is common knowledge now, man. It's common knowledge. This is uh, Psalms chapter 91, verse 11. Which this whole, this whole chapter is dynamite. You know, this is like a, a you know, a go-to psalm, you know? This is Psalms 91 and 11. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. You know, so when this temptation arises, if it be a heavenly father's will and his pleasure, he's going to give his angels charge over you, you know, to keep you in all thy ways. In other words, to not sin against how about Shin Yahweh Shai? Uh, when you look up this word here, it says, For he shall give his angels. Alright. Salakia. Charge over thee. Goes back to the Hebrew word Shamar. It says, to keep, guard, observe, give heed. In other words, they're going to be with you in the spirit. Should they might come to you in a dream, all right, at your lower state, to give you reassurance, man. It says, to keep, have a charge of, to keep, guard, keep, watch, and ward, protect, save. So what you heard in the world about guardian angels that's actually true. You know, that's one of the few things you heard that was true. Because a lot of stuff you heard in the world about the scriptures is all bullshit. Like, for instance, the Most High being all about love. But that's for a whole different, that's for a whole different lesson. It says, uh, watch, watchmen, particularly. It says, uh, to watch for, wait for, to watch, observe, to keep, retain, treasure up in memory. You know, and I don't have to read any more on that because you pretty much get the picture. All right. So when that time comes, if it be the Heavenly Father's will, 
he's gonna give the angels charge over you to keep you in all thy ways, man. It says the Hebrew word dara, dara ka. All right. You know, it says way, road, distance, journey, manner. Yeah. In other words, you're gonna they're gonna keep you on that straight path, man. You know, which is what keeping the Lord's statutes and commandments of the Lord. All right. Like for instance, when that time comes, if you're not able to buy or sell to eat, guess what? The spirit of the uh, the Lord, you know, it the Lord, hey, the Lord will give you reassurance, man. You know, you might be getting weak in the spirit of the Lord to give you reassurance. All right. It says journey, direction, manner, habit, way, of course of life, of moral character. So at your lowest state, the Lord is going to give you reassurance, man. You know. And I'm going to show, I'm going to go into the scripture here, and I'm going to prove to it that the Lord, uh, you know, the Lord is the one that's going to keep us from sinning against him. It's not us that would, that's going to reject the chip or, you know, take it. It's the most high that's going to keep, you know, you from sinning against him, man. Right? This is Genesis 20 and 6. And this is going into the time when uh, Abraham went into Egypt. All right. And he went there with Sarah, his wife. And he thought that they were going to. Uh, he thought pretty much he thought actually I can read up. I'll read up. And I'll, yeah. It says, And Abraham journeyed from thence towards the south country and dwelt between Kaddish and Shur and journeyed to Gera. And Abraham said of Sarah, his wife, she is my sister, and Abimelech, king of Gera, O it was Gera, not Egypt, sent and took Sarah. It says, But the Most High came to Abimelech in a dream. Let me see what it says there. See the word there? Alahayim. Which really, that's talking about the angels. See? Ruler, judges, divine ones, angels, gods. God. That's not, ain't no damn goddess. It says godlike one. Which is talking about the angels, man. Alright? It says, but God, or the angels, or the angel rather, came to Abimelech in a dream by night, and said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man, for the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife, going into the law. Alright? The law of what? Adultery. Which was the kind of plea for adultery? Death. He says, But Abimelech had not come near her. All right. In other words, he didn't sleep with the woman. He didn't, you know, have sex with her. It says, and he said, Lord, why wilt thou slay also a righteous nation? Because Abimelech, he wasn't an Israelite. He wasn't of the chosen seed. First of all, we, we're dealing with the time of Abraham. Abraham is the, the first father of the promise. So Abimelech was not a Jake. It says, but Abimelech had not come there her and he said Lord wilt thou slay also a righteous nation said he not unto me she is my sister yeah because Abraham did tell that to him man and it's going to go into it it says and she even she herself said he is my brother in the integrity of my heart and in innocency of my hands have I done this. It says, and I bet you that word is ain't uh, uh, Alahayim again. Yep. 
See that? Talking about the angels. So this links right back up with this scripture here. When he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. And this was a goddamn heathen. Alright? But it was all for the, uh, it was all for the, uh, the purpose of not having this damn heathen touch, uh, Abraham's wife. Alright? It says, and, uh, it says, and God, but it's really talking about the angel, said unto him in a dream, yea, I know that thou didst this in the integrity of thy heart, for I also withheld thee from sinning against me. Therefore suffered I thee Leave not. The not your music. To touch her. Listen anywhere, right. anytime. Okay. Therefore suffered I thee not to touch her. Now therefore restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet, and he will pray for thee, and thou shalt live. And if thou restore her not, know that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. All right, but the point is this scripture here, twenty and six. It says, "And God said unto him in a dream, or the angel said unto him in a dream, Yea, I know that thou didst this in the integrity of thy heart, for I also withheld thee from sinning against me, which is going to be the same thing with the chick, you know? They might give, they, they might say, listen." If you don't take this chip, you uh, you're gonna suffer by penalty death. You know, but the Lord they gotta put the spirit on you and withhold you from sinning against Him. Therefore, suffered I thee not to touch it. <coughs> <coughs> and when you read on, and when you read on, uh, you, you can read about the rest of the story in Genesis 20. All right, so let's go ahead. This is our Job 33 and 15. In a dream in the vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, and slumberings upon the bed. Yeah, when you're sleeping, man. You know, that deep sleep, that REM sleep. All right. It says, then he openeth the ears of men and sealeth their instructions. So we just robots for the most high, man, pretty much, man. All right. We're just androids for the most side. It says that he may, with even Esau and the other nations, man, he's being controlled by the most side. This goes for all men and women. That he may, hey, well, hey, these women got Satan and Satan is dealing with them. Now I'm just, you know, I'm just uh, being facetious. You know, most side seals the person's instructions. It says, uh, that he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. All right. So it's not going to be on us to say whether or not oh, we're going to take it or not. It's the Lord's will whether or not we take it. Okay. Just like when we used to go out to war against other nations, the Lord said, "Look, I'm only going to I'm only going to set up a certain amount of men. Like for instance, the story of Gideon and his 300 men." All right, he said, look, I'm only going to set up a certain amount of men, else Israel will say that we did it, all right, and not the Most High. So that was going into the time of Gideon 300 men. It says uh, that, that he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. So the Most High is going to do that again, all right? And we ain't going to be able to say, oh, it's because of us that we didn't take this chip. You know, it's going to be because of the will of the Most High we didn't take the chip. All right. Now let's go into uh, Hebrews 11 and 37, and we're going to close it on that. This is Hebrews 11 and 37. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, or tempted. All right. That's talking about the prophets, man. You know, let's look up that word tempted there. Strong's G, 3985, Pairazzo, Pairazzo. Yeah, Pairazzo, Pairazzo, all right? It says, to try whether a thing can be done 
It says to attempt, endeavor, to try, make trial, or test for the purpose of as as concerning him as concerning his quality or what he thinks or how he will behave himself. So the most high is gonna test this man, you know. And uh we went we went into uh Revelation three and ten. This thing is gonna come upon the world to try him, man. You know? Uh I have one more scripture. Uh if I if I remember correctly, it's in the book of Job. Yeah, let's uh go ahead. This is Job seven and seventeen us in the in the uh, point is in uh seven and eighteen. It says, uh, what is man that thou shouldest magnify him, and that thou shouldest set thine heart upon him? So Job is pretty much saying, man is such a, uh, man is such a low creature, or man is such a, uh, insignificant. Why should the Most High magnify man, or the Most High should set his heart upon man? Alright? It says, and that thou shouldest visit him every morning, and try him every moment. You know, and with that word "try," it's from the Hebrew word "ba bachan," bachan. It says to examine, try, prove, to examine. It says scrutinize, to test, to prove, try. Of gold, persons, the heart, man of the Most High, to be tried, proved. To make a try. And guess what? That's the time we coming into, man. That's the time we coming into. So let's go back to uh Hebrews. Let's go back up here to Hebrews. You know? It says here, they were stoned. They were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. You know that, and that might that might happen to a, that might happen to a brother. It's gonna happen to certain brothers, man. You know because you have martyrs. You know they were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and were tormented. You know from spirits messing with you and being destitute to the society. You, know, you, you come you, you come in the room for, for some reason. Everyone in the room that's giving you a dirty look, that's the demons on them, knowing the spirit of your house shy is on you. But it's not you that they hate, it's the spirit of your house shy they hate. It says, of whom the world was not worthy, so there's certain men that are so special unto the most high. Scriptures say the world's not even worthy of these men. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens. In caves of the earth, such as John the Baptist, he was in the, in the wilderness. All right, uh, you read about King David and his uh, mighty men who dwelled in a den in the cave before. You read about the men dwelling in catacombs and how certain men with uh, prophets were hid, you know, and whatnot. Man, okay, so the time of temptation is coming upon the world, man. Through this RFID microchip, and this is the mark of the beast. This is the mark of the beast. This RFID microchip is the mark of the beast. And with that, I'm gonna say shalom.